Before we get to the video, I wanted to let you guys know we're having a huge clearance sale on the website. Discounts over 50% off on everything you can think of. Hats, shirts, drinkware, you name it. So click the link in the description and head over there and check it out. It's Christmas time, which means that film studios are celebrating the only way they know how with more Christmas movies. And most of them are mediocre, some of them are even truly garbage, but there are plenty of them out there that we're happy to watch every single year. For this list, we're only going with feature length movies, so none of those 30 or 45 minute long Christmas specials you see on TV. So hey, I'm Nervous Nick with Screw Attack's Top 10 Christmas Movies. Number 10. What's this? A weird stop motion musical where a skeleton leaves Halloween Town to learn about Christmas? Sign us up for this reverse Grinch holiday mashup. On top of this being every emo kid's favorite movie and sweatshirt and plush and shoes and lamp and purse and cuckoo clock, The Nightmare Before Christmas is loaded with amazing animation, incredible songs, and its signature eerie Christmas spirit. We love this one for its ability to walk the tightrope between terrifying moments that are likely to haunt any child's dreams to moments of genuine Christmas glee. But can we talk about the giant Michelin man looking bug stuffed potato sack in the room? Ugh, gross. And also why? But more importantly, what's behind the other holiday doors? Why haven't there been sequels? Like, come on, Disney, we got three follow-ups to Frozen, but not one for this? And yes, we know there's supposed to be a sequel manga coming out, but that's not the same thing, and you know it. Number nine. It's Christmas time in the hood. And uh, this is the part where the script says, I'm supposed to be sorry for saying that, but really, I regret nothing. What do you get when you're robbed by Santa Claus, have to pay rent by the end of the day, and you and your friend are both hired and fired as security guards within the same Friday? You get a literal Christmas party. Friday After Next is another on our list that earns its spot by being a hilariously original Christmas movie. I defy any of you to mention a film in the comments below that better marries Christmas spirit with pimps. Well, ho, 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 indeed, am I right? Okay, for real, I need to get out of this entry quick. Seriously though, it's a great Christmas movie when you need something a little less kiddy and with a lot more bite. And ultimately, Friday After Next is packed with a great holiday lesson. It teaches us that Christmas is less about material possessions and more about not getting caught by Damon. Unless, of course, you have those pliers. Ugh, yikes. Number eight. Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol is an absolute classic, and it's been adapted uh, a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot. So how do you make it fresh? Throw in Bill Murray and make it a dark comedy. And when I say dark comedy, I mean dark comedy. Like get fired on Christmas Eve and come back with a shotgun levels of dark. But what makes Scrooge so great is Bill Murray's ability to crack us up while doing the worst things imaginable. Like who else can make us laugh while threatening to kill an entire room of network executives? Now, I have to kill all of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Ebenezer Scrooge doesn't do that in the original. At least, not in my copy. Scrooge takes a story packed with Christmas spirit and turns it on its head. And every year, we look forward to the ghostly visits, taxi rides from hell, and watching Frank Cross get... <gasps> Scrooge. Number seven. How do you turn the death of Santa Claus into a celebrated Christmas classic? Well, for starters, you could force Tim Allen to slowly transform into a gray old fat man through a legal loophole. Uh? Oh, that's right. The Santa Claus is one of those weird 90s movies that seem to spring up out of nowhere before anybody had a chance to ask, should we do this? Should we? But you know what? I'm glad they did. We ended up with this movie about Santa, the North Pole, magic, and learning how to maturely navigate the minefield that is dealing with divorce, splitting up your holidays, and appeasing all three of your parents all wrapped up in the classic Tim the Toolman Taylor humor. The Santa Claus covers a lot of ground in 97 minutes. And if I've taken anything away, it's that I can murder a person, get off scot-free, and also be granted magical powers. Watch your back, Popo Gijo. Number six. Ah, yes, a Chris Mastery. This movie must be Italian. All right, come on, you knew this movie was gonna be on the list. How could we count down the top 10 Christmas movies without talking about Ralphie and his adventures in A Christmas Story? I mean, it channels every kid's base Christmas desires. Nobody wanted socks and pajamas. We especially didn't want a big pink bunny onesie. No, 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 we all wanted toys. And I'm talking dangerous toys. No, no, I want to fish a red undercover and I should do it to get rid of my leg rifle. Exactly, Ralphie knows what's up. Ralphie's also the kid that we all once were, and A Christmas Story perfectly captures a childhood Christmas. 
You know, with your parents obsessing over a leg-shaped lamp, getting your tongue stuck to a pole, and of course, lying to your parents when you immediately shoot yourself in the eye with your new BB gun. Worth it! Number 5 Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs! And also make one of the greatest action movies of all time! There's an endless debate about whether Die Hard is really a Christmas movie, and I'm here to say, yippee ki yes it is! It's a story about John McClane trying to patch things up with his wife, whose name is Holly, by the way, while he tries to get a group of people home for Christmas on Christmas Eve with a ton of Christmas music in the background. There's even 12 evil henchmen, like what else do you want? A message from Santa? Hey, it puts me in the spirit, all right? Die Hard is truly one of the best action movies of all time, and the fact that we get to enjoy it during the holidays is one of the greatest Christmas presents there is. And as the ancient internet saying goes, it's not Christmas until Hans Gruber falls off of Nakatomi Plaza. Nice. Number four. Nothing says Christmas like getting Santa wrapped up in complicated legalese. I mean, seriously, between the Santa Claus and Miracle on 34th Street, I'm really starting to wonder what this fascination is with Santa and the law. True, he commits a couple billion BNEs every Christmas, but as long as we've got that Nintendo Switch under the tree, you don't bat an eye. But that's a topic for another time. Miracle on 34th Street is a heartwarming Christmas tale that isn't just about believing in Santa, but is also about believing in what Santa represents. This idea that being kind and putting forth goodwill towards all men is more important than anything else. It's beautiful! Oh, and by now I hope you've realized we're talking about the OG Miracle on 34th Street, not the remake with Matilda. That's garbage. Also, how come the movie poster for the remake looks just like that one iconic scene from The Exorcist? Did, did nobody else, nobody else notice that? Is that just me? Number three. Now, for one of the most celebrated Christmas movies of the last 15 years, Elf. From the moment Buddy the Elf hopped into our lives, it became an instant classic. Who would have guessed that Will Ferrell playing a giant elf would not only be funny, but one of the best Christmas movies ever? It celebrates the silly side of the holiday with Ferrell's signature act like a toddler style of humor, while at the same time highlighting classic Christmas movie themes like family and blading in the Christmas spirit and stuff like that. Plus, it starts out with nods to all those great animated Rankin Bass Christmas specials. I mean, what's more Christmassy than that? Tyrion Lannister running down a table and beating the crap out of Will Ferrell? Because, yeah, it's, it's got that too. Number two. All Clark Griswold wants to do is have a fun, old-fashioned family Christmas. Instead, he gets a traditional National Lampoon misadventure. In National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, Clark is your average family man who, try as he might to hold his hap-hap-happy Christmas demeanor together, is ready to blow his fuse at any given moment. And who could blame him? I mean, his family gets run off the road, their unwanted relatives show up unannounced, Clark doesn't get a Christmas bonus that he's already spent, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's the fun of this movie. Chevy Chase about to lose his mind makes us all laugh because we've all experienced our fair share of Christmas chaos. This movie plays up holiday staples and exaggerates them to ridiculous and hilarious new levels. And while we can all relate to the holiday stress, at least a SWAT team hasn't busted into our homes and held us at gunpoint. And as far as I know, my cat is still alive. Just a side note, Christmas Vacation also happens to be my dad's all-time favorite movie. This one's for you, Padre. It's number one. Hello! Welcome to the Muppet Christmas Carol. Yes, number one on our list is another adaptation of A Christmas Carol. But not only is the Muppet Christmas Carol the definitive version of the story, it's also the greatest Christmas movie, period. The Muppets were made to adapt this story. Kermit as Bob Cratchit, Waldorf and Statler as the Marleys, and Fozzie Bear as Fozzie Wig? Oh, it fits so well! The Muppets treatment not only breathes new life into this classic tale, but it also makes for a great Christmas movie in its own right. It's packed with great original songs, and a fresh take on the story through Gonzo and Rizzo's narration. Also, Sir Michael Caine is Ebenezer Scrooge! The Muppet Christmas Carol is funny, heartwarming, and anchored by a Christmas story synonymous with the day itself. God bless us. God bless us, everyone. For secret number 11, we're gonna break our own rules just a little bit, cause screw it, it's Christmas. This one goes out to all the animated Christmas specials. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, A Charlie Brown Christmas, Frosty the Snowman, and my favorite, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Although it does feel like I'm forgetting something. Kevin! 